So Qualcomm is holding its annual Snapdragon Summit where it has released details of the new processor, flagship processor, that's going to be powering top of the line smartphones this year and into next year. The processor is called the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and I've got all the details for you. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is the fifth generation of 8 series processor since Qualcomm introduced the single digit branding. Before that, it was like the 888 and so on. So we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that was in 2021 with the ARM Cortex X2 as the uh, performance core. Then we had the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in 2022 with the Cortex uh, X3 as the performance core. And then we had the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in 2023 with the ARM Cortex X4. So this is all pretty simple so far. One, two, three successive years. But then we had the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now it wasn't called Gen 4, it was just called the 8 Elite. And that was in the following year, 2024, and it came with the Qualcomm Orion Gen 2. And Orion is Qualcomm's in-house designed uh, processor, so it's ARM compatible. It adheres to the ARM architecture. However, it's designed by Qualcomm and not by ARM. And now we've got the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. So they're kind of putting the Gen 4 in last year's one. So it comes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we've got the Qualcomm Orion Gen 3 CPU. But if you notice, this was the Orion Gen 2 and the Orion Gen 3. What happened to the Orion Gen 1? Well, actually, we have the Snapdragon X Elite, so X10, let's say. Uh, so we've got the 8 and then the 10, the 8 and then the X. And that was in 2023, and that's a laptop uh, processor. So it's not designed for mobile phones, it's designed for bigger mobile devices, laptops. So you've got the X Elite, and that had the Qualcomm Orion Gen 1 CPU in it. Then the following year, they were able to make a mobile version of that. So it was the Gen 2. And now we've actually also had released the Snapdragon X2 Elite. So notice they haven't gone for the Snapdragon X Elite Gen 2. This is now the Snapdragon X2 Elite, which has got the Qualcomm Orion Gen 3 uh, CPU in it. And that is also a laptop processor. And I'll talk a little bit about that right at the very end of this video. Okay, now one of the big things about this uh, processor, uh, the 8 Elite Gen 5, is it's got very high clock speed. It reaches a peak clock speed of 4.6 gigahertz, which is absolutely amazing for a mobile device. So that's giving a performance boost of 20% compared to last year's Snapdragon 8 device, up to 35% more power efficiency, uh, and also a 16% overall power saving for the whole SOC. So of course, the CPU part is only one thing, because you've got GPUs and NPUs and video decoders and image processors connected with the camera, and you've got modems, and you've got all this stuff. So overall, 16% uh, better power efficiency. And the Orion Gen 3 CPU has hardware matrix acceleration built into it. We've talked a bit about this on this channel a few times before. Remember, uh, Apple first had it with the uh, M4, and that was using Scalable Matrix Extension version 2. And then ARM released it in their new C1 series that also has SME version 2 in it. And we'll talk more about the uh, hardware matrix acceleration that's in this chip uh, in a moment. So what are these custom-built Qualcomm Orion CPUs? Well, as I said, they're ARM architecture compatible. So it's a 64-bit ARM V8 architecture device. Note that ARM are now onto ARM V9. We won't go into the whole history of why Qualcomm aren't on ARM V9, but there were lawsuits and all this kind of stuff, but we'll leave that for another time. Now you get two prime cores at up to 4.6 gigahertz, and then there are six performance cores clocked at 3.62 uh, Giga. So a very different idea than what we're getting uh, from other places in the mobile area. Apple, for example, have a 2 plus 4. Most places on Android uh, give you a kind of a, a 1 plus 3 plus 4 or a 2 plus 2 plus 4 or other combinations. So this is a 2 plus 6 uh, set up here by Qualcomm. And you've got that scalable matrix extension. So that is, it adheres to ARM's scalable matrix extension specification, as you'd expect, but it's not SME2, it's SME1. Now, to my knowledge, it's the only chip that actually implements SME1 uh, on mobile, maybe across even server. I'm not sure 100%, but certainly on mobile. 
it either didn't get implemented at all or everyone jumped to SME2. So ARM's on SME2, Apple's on SME2, Qualcomm are gone with SME1. And of course, there's a new GPU in this processor. So 23% increase in overall performance on the GPU. It's clocked now at 1.2 gigahertz, 20% power reduction. And it's got this interesting uh, feature, which is Adreno High Performance Memory, HPM, which is 18 megabytes of dedicated memory just for the GPU. There's also Tile Memory Heap, which optimizes memory usage and bandwidth for tiling while reducing power usage. And there's also Mesh Shading, which allows the GPU to process groups of vertexes that corners and triangles more flexibly and efficiently. And there's also full Unreal Engine 5 support, and that includes all of the ray tracing stuff that you get in Unreal Engine 5. Let's just talk about this HPM memory. So it's dedicated memory cache that boosts bandwidth and reduces fetch latency. So it's it's there's 18 megabytes of which a lot of the stuff can stay very close to the GPU without it being in the normal RAM. And this results in a 10% power saving because you don't have to go back and forth so much to the main RAM and of course better performance. Now Qualcomm is collaborating with game developers uh, like NetEase and Tencent and so on to optimize their games and the drivers to make a uh, best use of this kind of high performance memory very close to the GPU. Now one very interesting thing about the new processor is it includes the advanced professional video codec. It's the first mobile platform to record in uh, APV. Uh, APV is a video codec which is designed to be used for professional high level, high quality video recordings and for therefore post-production. It's perceptually lossless video quality that is close to the original uncompressed quality, though of course it is compressed. And it's designed as an intermediate codec for video editing and for post-production. It's not designed that you then ship your final content in that uh, format that still remains to be, you know, VP9 or uh, H264, H265, and all that kind of stuff. AV1 even. Now, APV encodes each frame. This is very different to uh, how other codecs work. Each frame as a self contained still image, similar to motion JPEG, MJPEG, and also what our Apple ProRes does. And that's very different to how AV1 and H264, H265 do things. They group frames together and uh, keep the differences between them and so on. APV encodes each frame as a self-contained still image, and that's how it's able to maintain this perceptually lossless video quality, but of course the files are going to be much bigger. Now we also should mention the new Hexagon NPU and sensing hub. So the Hexagon NPU is 37% faster. It's got scalar vector and accelerator configurations. There's support for int 2, int 4, int 8, int 16, FP8 and FP16. So that's 2-bit integers, 4-bit integers, 8-bit integers, 16-bit integers, 8-bit floating point, 16-bit floating point for running uh, neural networks. Uh, and of course, I've got videos here on this channel about how quantization and um, the changing down of the precisions affect the quality of models uh, here on this channel. But basically on mobile, the support for int2, for example, int4 are really important for having smaller models that are able to run on device without having to go up into the cloud. And also the sensing hub really is the gateway to uh, the kind of always on AI. So you've got dual micro NPUs for audio voice and sensors. Of course, you want to be able to speak to the device. You want it to be able to know what's going on in terms of the sensors. Is it just in a pocket? Is it being used and so on? Uh, always uh, dual, always sensing ISPs to connect to concurrent, always sensing cameras. So audio, voice, sensors, and now video are all able to feed into the NPU and then whatever uh, different ideas the OEMs come up with that they can then use that for different ideas. So what about devices? Well, we're going to see flagship devices from global OEMs and various smartphone brands, including Honor, OnePlus, Oppo, uh, Redmi, uh, Asus, Republic of Gamers, Samsung, certainly the, the Galaxy S26 series will have uh, this chip in it. Sony, uh, Xiaomi have officially announced that the Xiaomi 17, 17 Pro and 17 Pro Max will also have this chip in it. So lots of chips are going to see this. Some of them will even be launched in the next few days. Uh, and then obviously Samsung traditionally does it early next year and the others have their schedules as well. So 
Certainly exciting times we're going to see this soon and over a whole bunch of devices over the next few months and into 2026. So stay tuned because the Snapdragon Tech Summit is ongoing. Now, if Qualcomm follow the pattern of previous years, then it will have QRD, Qualcomm reference devices, or basically a smartphone that Qualcomm make as a reference device. It helps them test how their processes are doing in real device. It also helps their partners come quickly to market with uh, the latest processor. And it also gives the people at the conference, which will include people from Android Authority, to test the benchmarking. And once we get hold of those numbers, then I'll be able to report them here on this channel. And once we have the test from the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 devices and the Dimensity 9500, I just did a video about that just a few days ago, plus we've already got a lot of numbers now from the iPhone 17, then I can do a comparison video across the spectrum, Android uh, and uh, iPhone to see how we are. Where are we today in terms of performance, battery efficiency, uh, sustained performance and so on. And also Qualcomm, as I mentioned, have announced the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme and the Snapdragon X2 Elite for laptops. And when I get a moment to breathe, I will also make a video uh, about that and uh, also talk about what that means for us. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.